Well, let's, we'll just kind of, Christy, I'm gonna let you just kind of start. Um, Julie, I know you just popped on, but we just quiz Stan. Stan, for Julie's sake, will you uh, kind of reintroduce yourself real quick and let her know what you're up to? Morning, Julie. Good morning. My name's Stan Bryant. Um, I started a consultancy a couple months ago called Strategic Initiative Solutions. And I focus on helping small and medium-sized businesses um, implement the initiatives in a strategic plan. You know, what I've found is that um, many of these businesses, they have a lot of great ideas. They have a lot of management talent. What they don't have is um, a, a strong project management infrastructure. And if they take the executive talent and apply it to the initiative, then other parts of the business fail. So, or, or suffer would be a better way to say that. Um, so my goal is to help them and, and turn them from a implementation function into a sponsor function and, and do the project management for those initiatives. Cool, great, great. All right. Yeah, go, I'll, go ahead, Chrissy. Go ahead. Right. I'm, I'm gonna share my screen. Bear with me. If you can't hear me or I'm going to quickly, let me know. If you have questions, feel free just to ask. I think this is a fairly casual environment. And so please feel free. So first off, thank you so much for inviting me, Michelle and Brady, to speak to the group today. Thank you, Stan and Julie, for your interest in learning about EDC and hopefully have a few others to hop on to. Um, so I am here just to kind of introduce the Entrepreneurial Development Center or the EDC, as I'm going to call it, which is the organization for which I'm the marketing director. EDC is an 18, almost a 19 year old organization that helps Iowa high impact businesses. And you'll just, these are a few of our client photos here. So I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna introduce myself really briefly. I've been the marketing director at EDC for the past 15 years. And uh, before that, I worked for a couple of software companies in product and project management and market research. So I came to EDC 15 years ago to kind of apply my market research background um, and help EDC's clients do customer discovery and customer satisfaction surveys, competitive analysis, and those kinds of things. And since starting, I've kind of morphed and you know also been helping ED drive EDC's marketing initiatives as well. It's been a fun, fun, fun time. I'm gonna quickly just tick through what I'm gonna cover today. So I'm gonna share with you EDC's mission, why we feel it's important, who we help, what we do exactly, how we do it, what we've learned in these 18 plus years, a little bit um, share a few of our clients' successes and talk about the impact that our clients have on Iowa's economy. So EDC's mission is to stimulate Iowa's economic growth through the creation and expansion of high impact businesses. And so we focus fairly narrowly on what we feel are high impact, high growth companies. We don't focus on retail organizations or service organizations, um, not because we don't feel that they're important. They certainly are important to the vibrancy of our economy. We just have a lean team. And so we practice what we preach. We tell our clients, you have to focus, focus, focus. And so we try to do that ourselves. So why do we focus on those high impact businesses and, and these locally founded businesses? Why do we invest our time on those entities? We feel that locally founded businesses, so businesses that are headquartered in Iowa, and EDC is a statewide organization. While we're based in Cedar Rapids, in downtown Cedar Rapids, we work with companies across the state. Um, we feel that these locally founded businesses create wealth that gets reinvested right here in Iowa, you know, via philanthropy, via development of infrastructure and structures and community ownership. They're vested, they're, they live here, they work here, and they're vested in this community. That's why we focus on these entities. They also attack, uh, attract and retain high quality talent, which broadens our workforce provides more diverse skills in our area, provides for a more educated workforce, and starts to build that future community leadership. Builds leaders who are lo located here, vested here, and wanting to put back into the community. They also retain local services. So rather than a headquarter company in you know, some other state on the East Coast or the West Coast or what have you, using 
their vendors, wherever headquarters is located, if the headquarters are here in Iowa, they're going to be supporting these services that are right here in our midst, you know, whether it be legal, accounting, banking, marketing, and other kinds of service, print services, all of those things, they'll be supporting our vendors that are located right here in Iowa. And lastly, locally founded businesses create community leaders that put their time and energy and money into the, into the area where they live. Over the last almost 19 years, 18 plus years, EDC has worked with nearly 1,200 Iowa businesses of all stages in 40 plus counties. You'll see some logos back there, but it, there's, we've touched a lot of companies. The industries that we work in because of the nature of focusing on high impact businesses are IT, manufacturing, biotechnology, consumer goods, communications, agriculture technology, a little bit of financial technology, a tiny bit of entertainment, some, some service businesses that have models that can be franchised or expanded throughout the, the country, and then some ed tech as well. So like I mentioned, because EDC focuses on these high impact businesses, they are interstate commerce. So basically they are selling outside the state or at least have the goal of doing so. Sometimes a company will come to us and they're proving out a model and they'll prove it out locally or prove it out in Iowa with the goal of expanding learning and then expanding out regionally, nationally, or internationally. The companies that we target or focus on have the ability to generate $10 million plus in revenue a year. Again, they're not all doing that right away. Sometimes it takes a long time, but they at least have the opportunity to do so with the market that they're serving. And then, so where do we work? Uh, again, I, uh, EDC is a statewide business accelerator. We're located here in Cedar Rapids. So by that function, most of our, our clients are in the corridor, I would say Cedar Rapids, Iowa City and surrounding communities, but we do work with clients across the state and have worked in more than 40 counties so far. Oh, I should also go back up. So EDC, I touched on this. Uh, when a lot of people hear the word entrepreneur, they think startup, that's sort of these days anyway, especially. And so while EDC certainly does work with our share of startup companies, the breakout of the stages of businesses with which we work are really, it's about a third, a third, and a third. So a third are startup, roughly. A third are what we would deem as early stage or companies that have been generating revenue for maybe five years or less, but are still needing some help to scale up to that next level or are still really building out their teams. And then lastly, about a third of the companies with which we work are mature businesses. So businesses that are 10, 15, 20, 25 years old. Um, and some people might say, well, why would they need you know, help, you know, why would they need the guidance from, you know, a team of business consultants or what have you, but oftentimes, you know, sometimes those businesses have been in business so long, they're grappling with um, changing technologies, grappling with maybe rolling out a new product in, in a new market, and, or maybe they're transitioning from one generation of ownership to the next and need help doing that gracefully. Uh, to Stan's point, a lot of times, even with mature businesses, sometimes those processes and that planning step gets skipped or there's just not time to focus on it or they don't take the time to focus on it. So sometimes we help them take a step back and really understand their market and the opportunity that lies before them and how they best tackle that. So that is types of businesses we do. So what is it exactly that we do? And I think that's sometimes hard to really, hard for us to describe. So I, I describe EDC, by definition, we've always called ourselves a business accelerator. But I think these days when people think of that, they think of a 90-day tech accelerator, and that is not EDC's model. We are a long-term hands-on engagement business accelerator. So some of our clients, um, a few of our clients have been with EDC since day one. Um, they may have come in as an idea on a napkin, literally, literally that was one of, one of our current clients, um, came in when Kurt just opened his doors, had an idea, Kurt engaged and kind of helped them with the naming of the business and, and the launch of the business. And almost 19 years later, here we are, and they're a mature established business with you know, many employees generating millions of dollars of revenue 
And it's not like they work with us every day, but they'll call upon us when they hit a challenge or a hurdle that they haven't faced before, or as they you know, have a, you know, any sort of need as they're growing to meet their market demands. So the types of actual work that EDC can help clients with, we provide marketing research and some strategic planning help with our clients. We help with business planning and business modeling. Sometimes clients have an idea, but they haven't really figured out the pricing model or how they might go to market or sell that product to their market. We do some new product research and development and help them with a launch and a rollout, what that looks like. We help with marketing planning and budgeting. And then in many cases, some marketing, what I'm gonna call marketing tactics. PR, digital communications, email marketing, pay-per-click marketing, those kinds of things. And in some cases, I mean, we're a lean team of five folks, so we're not necessarily doing all the heavy lifting and doing all the work, but we might connect our clients with some trusted vendors who can help them execute these things. We have a, an operations, a VP of operations, Jane Burroughs on staff, who helps our clients implement you know, ERP, um, helps them with purchasing negotiations and all those kinds of things if they have a lean team and need some help and advisement on those types of areas. Um, in fact, one time Jane stepped in for a long-term client of ours who had an operations person leave the company all of a sudden in the middle of a new ERP system rollout. And so Jane physically went and worked at that client's facility for about a month and a half or two months, helped them through that ERP system launch and help them you know, get product out the door for that time and interview a new candidate to then bring in and replace the person who left. And then she was able to step out of that business and come back to EDC full time. So we've done you know, heavy intensive engagements like that on occasion. We help clients with financial planning and management. Uh, Kurt, our CEO, is a, wears an investor hat sometimes and can help our clients understand what a potential investor might be looking for in terms of, you know financials and projections and having all of those, the numbers to back up the story of the business. We help several of our clients with leadership building and Kurt meets um, in some cases weekly and monthly with some of our client CEOs to help them grow as a leader and help them, you know, even personally grow and build their, those leadership skills. We help with building teams with our clients as well and help them understand where their gaps are and what the priority hires should be and help them with the onboarding process and the hiring process. And then lastly, um, and many entrepreneurs would say this is probably the most important piece, but uh, is the capital raising, helping our clients, you know, first of all, identify what do they, what types of, what amount of money do they need and what will they achieve with that money? And then what types of funds make most sense for the business given the type of business it is, the stage that it is at, and those kinds of things. And we help them go after any state and regional funding that makes sense. Sometimes there's federal dollars as well, depending on the business. And then um, obviously equity, the capital as well, if that makes sense. How do we do what we do? We have over the you know almost 19 years developed a, a process by which we work. We, first of all, would bring in a prospective client and assess their business. Kurt wrote a book several years ago called The Recipe for Business Success, and we use that as sort of a loose curriculum, if you will, um, to working with our clients. And it has a report card element that you're seeing towards the right of my screen. And we take clients through a scorecard rubric of sorts where we basically understand their strategic fit in the market. So what is the need for the business? You know, how large is the market opportunity and how much do they know about that? Sometimes they've done a lot of their homework and done a lot of the customer discovery and research and sometimes they haven't. So we help them identify, this is an opportunity for me to dig in and learn more. And then do they have a business plan? And that can be, you know, anything as formal as a, you know, very lengthy document or it can be a PowerPoint document that they sort of use as a living and breathing document to, to run their business. Do they have that? Do they have you know, even an executive summary in place? What does their team look like? Is it balanced? Do they have uh, team members in the right areas that they need to scale that business? And if not, what are the opportunities for priority hires? What is the experience and track record of the leader of the business? You know, after so many years of working with almost, you know, nearly 1,200 entrepreneurs, we've also seen and learned that sometimes the 
the person who starts the business and has the idea and has the energy and the excitement and the passion to get that business or product launched into the market is not the person to, to lead the company as it grows into a full-fledged large business. And so sometimes you know, we have to help them arrive at that conclusion and help them find someone who is the best fit to scale that business further and they can, you know, stay on or they can go and do something new, start something else and, and do something new. And then what are the resources they have to scale that business? You know, what's the capital? Is, is there infrastructure they need? Is there software or technology that they have to have to, to run that business? And then we give them a score and not to make them feel bad or make them feel guilty, but really just identify where's our opportunity to improve this business, to grow this business even further from where it is today. And that's sort of how we operate. And we have, we develop an action plan that then we kind of work, uh, work from with the client. At the same time, after years of not doing something like this, we've also uh, implemented a leadership assessment. Kurt has been using the Caliper profile since I think probably for about 30 years. And uh, we have each one of our clients take the Caliper and it helps us understand their working styles and strengths, which we use uh, to help us best work with and communicate with that client. We then understand, you know, what's their sense of urgency? How quickly are they going to arrive at a conclusion? Do we need to maybe explain things in a little bit different manner? Those kinds of things. Then on the flip side, the client oftentimes will then use that assessment to see and understand. So I have a team and we have these strengths, but maybe we have some weaknesses in these areas. And so when we hire, we need to balance that out being mindful that we need people to work well with our current team, but we also know that we have these holes we have to fill with disciplines and strengths. So we operate from that as well. So we help the clients identify the opportunities for the growth. We help them establish goals. And sometimes our goals for the business haven't always aligned with the entrepreneurs. We have to make sure what is their goal. Maybe their goal isn't to create a $50 million a year business, even though we see that there's opportunity for that. Maybe their business or their goal is to create a solid business that employs their family, employs people in their community, and that they can manage themselves and feel comfortable with that. Okay, that's the goal. So that's what we're working towards. We help them develop a plan that, that works towards that goal. And then we work with them in a hands-on manner to execute on that plan, which I think is a little bit different um, from some other organizations EDC will get in and do the work if it needs be, or we'll guide the, if, guide the client to do the work themselves. So by that nature, the average engagement of EDC is about five years or more. And we have had clients who will work, for, will work with EDC for a period of time, then they'll go off and work on their own, and then maybe they'll hit another challenge or have another opportunity and they'll come back and work with EDC again and work through those challenges. How do we do it? The people are also how we how we help our clients. So Kurt, you'll see his picture towards the left. He's our CEO. He was a former president uh, at Crystal Group in Hiawatha for a number of years and grew that company. And then uh, when he exited Crystal, Crystal Group, he came to ED, he actually was on a some sort of a chamber board and someone had come in and presented to the group and asked for some funding to help entrepreneurs in the area. And this was back in like, probably 2002. And when they left, Kurt said, you know, they're right. We don't really have anything that helps these scaling businesses. When Crystal was chugging along at a great pace, it was fine. But when we hit the dot-com bubble burst, I had challenges finding help for a company like Crystal Group in the area. And so he kind of said, but I don't know that they asked for enough money to do what they want to do. And so the chamber at the time said, well, why don't you go and research what is needed, come back to us and let, you know, tell us what we should do. And so we spent the next, I think, almost six to nine months looking at accelerators and incubators across the country and developed a plan and a recommendation and came back and presented to the board. And they said, well, okay, let's do it. And will, will you do it? And so he, you know, initially said, sure, I'll, you know, start this with the intention of, you know, starting it and then handing it off to someone else and doing something else. But here he is almost 19 years later, still running our team. So, and very passionate about what he does every day. Uh, Stacy Pioli, Julie Zelensky, Jane Burroughs, and myself round up the, the Lean Mean team that is EDC today. Stacy's our office manager. 
and is also a certified QuickBooks expert. So she helps a number of our clients with their books. They're, you know, basically doing their accounts payable and receivable and making sure that they are keeping the records that they need to, to have a sound and successful business. Julie Zelensky, who's the farthest right picture on the top, is our VP of Marketing and Strategy, and she helps our clients with just that. Uh, building marketing plans, marketing budgets, developing a strategy and doing some strategic planning um, and then helping with marketing execution as needed. Jane Burroughs is, is the bottom left photo and she's our operations expert at EDC, helping our clients with all things operations, inventory, purchasing. And then also she has been at EDC, I believe it's been 12 years, 12 or 13 years. Um, she's become our funding guru is what I call her. So she's very intimate with the IEDA funds, uh, ECCOG, and helping clients even navigate the whole SBIR world and helping them understand what opportunities are available to their business from a funding standpoint. And then there's me as well. And then I help, I assist Julie with marketing strategy and planning and then marketing execution, as well as uh, performing EDC's marketing duties. That's our team. What have we learned over the last 18 plus years in working with entrepreneurs? Uh, we have come to understand that entrepreneurs' needs are very unique to their own situation and the timing at which they arrive at EDC, and it requires tailored support. We don't really have a, you know, an off-the-shelf formula. We bring each client in, we understand their, their story, understand their goals, and where they're currently at today and where they wanna be. And so, and then kind of outline how, how we're gonna help them get there. We've learned that the expertise and the mentors applied to those entrepreneurs have to be applicable to what they're doing from the industry with the background that is needed, you know, not just, you know, someone who's been in business before, who's launched a business, has a, is it a business in that industry or in that target market who, you know, someone who has a track record who and actually can apply their experience to that particular entrepreneur situation. Hands-on engagement is a must um, for our clients. We've, Kurt, I think when he would tell you, when he started EDC, he thought, well, I'll just provide some advice. They'll take it and be on their way and everything will be good. But you know, uh, entrepreneurs have their own opinions about things and have their own ways of doing things. And sometimes they have to arrive at a painful conclusion that you know, what you told me was, was right, but I had to learn it myself. And sometimes they can't do some of the work on their own. They're too busy. They wear too many hats. They just don't have the background or the skill set for certain pieces of the business. And so we have to get in with our backgrounds and experience and help them for a period of time until they can either learn it or hire that talent on themselves. And that's the goal. And then what we've really ultimately learned is the more we're involved, the faster that company will scale. So if we can really get in and get involved on a deep level, we can help them. This is just a really small uh, smattering of some logos of companies that we've worked with and that you might recognize. Um, like I mentioned, we work in all kinds of capacities. Clients will oftentimes come through our door because they are looking for money. And you know, we kind of make them take a step back a little bit and help them assess the opportunity for the business and understand what makes most sense for them. Um, we really are mindful about having our clients make sound financial decisions. It's their lives, you know, that are on the line. Truly, sometimes they have, you know, cashed out their 401ks to start a business, or you know, they've leveraged their homes. And so, it's really important that they understand and can make, you know, be most effective with that business. So we work, as you can see, you know, Volta has been a client since they were Cobalt. And you know, initially we're starting the data center business. We've worked with Ecolips, ClickStop, Inti Connects, all kinds of folks. Cedarcrest is a fun story. I don't know if any of you know Cedarcrest. They are a pen company and it started out of um, the flood basically. So they were Norwood Souvenir Pen Company employees. And when the flood happened and flooded the Norwood building, that company decided not to keep its Iowa location. Souvenir Pen had been bought by Norwood, which I believe is a Minnesota company. And so they decided to close the Cedar Rapids location. And obviously the employees were really upset and wanted to start their own pen company. And so a couple of those folks came in to meet with us early on and we helped them launch that business, which is still in business today. So we're able to keep some of those folks and in, in a business in Iowa. 
Pear Deck is another fun story that's an ed tech uh, software as a service company that uh, provides basically a platform to help improve student engagement in the classroom. And that is a husband, wife, founder team. And this, I believe Pear Deck was their second startup company. And um, they really gained significant traction last year during the pandemic when schools had to switch to an online platform all of a sudden. And so they had you know, the platform to help them do that in a very successful and engaging manner. And so then ultimately at the end of last year, they were sold to another company. And so the founders and investors um, did well. And so our hope is that they'll continue to invest in uh, other startups here in the area and maybe we'll see those founders start something else sometime soon. So the impact created by the companies with which EDC has worked over these, the stats are for 17 years, basically 18 years. But um, so we've, like I mentioned, supported nearly 1,200 companies. This, these are stats from the end of two, 2020. Our clients have raised and employed $768 million of capital. That is, you know, government funding and assistance. That's angel equity, all of those kinds of things, debt capital as well. They've generated uh, $2.3 billion of revenue for our state and deployed $672 million worth of wages for their employees, generating a total economic impact of about $3.8 billion. So these locally founded companies, these small businesses really do create a massive amount of impact for Iowa. And that, this is why EDC exists and why we work so hard with our clients to help them launch and grow these businesses here in Iowa. Any questions for me? Okay, well, I have to check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back you up just a hot minute. Yep. So quickly, what was your background before you joined EDC? Yep. So I'm an Iowa native. I'm from Vinton, Iowa originally. And then I went to the University of Iowa. I was a journalism and mass communications major. And so when I came out of the university, I thought I was going to work in journalism. I had worked for the Gazette, worked for the Daily Iowan, and ultimately thought I wanted to work for a magazine somewhere. But uh, the summer after I graduated from Iowa, I started working for a small qualitative market research firm in North Liberty. And um, got a taste of what market research could mean to a business. And this company, while it was really small, worked with only Fortune 500 companies. And so I had really large clients like Sprint, Hallmark, Bell South Telecommunications, um, Yellow Freight, UPS, and some healthcare and banking entities. And I really uh, was kind of bitten by the market research bug and really enjoyed that work. And so I ended up not going back into journalism, but staying in market research. So then from that job, I went to Parsons Technology at the time, and you'll recognize that name, and uh, was in their market research uh, department and worked really closely with product managers and executives to kind of help shape the product mix and our marketing to our customers and prospects. During the time that I was there, it was purchased by Mattel Interactive. And so that was an interesting um, experience being part of you know, a large company, um, of an entity. And then uh, from there, I went to a company called Decision Mark, which was owned by the Gazette family of companies at the time, which was a software company for the broadcast industry. And at the time that I came on board, they were in the midst of wanting to launch a consumer product and this was in about 2000. And so digital and high definition TV was just on the horizon. And so we launched an online TV guide for digital and high definition TV. And on the other side of that business, they had uh, basically a satellite predictive um, technology that helped broadcasters, local broadcasters retain their signal areas. Um, some so kind of some technical broadcast uh, support there. But I worked in that business for a number of years as a product manager, so working closely with engineers, software engineers, and management to drive the, it was a Titan TV uh, product was my, the product that I was in charge of, and so basically grew that, that product as well. And then I came to EDC, and I've been here for 15 years, so cool. a little bit of happy. 
So you kind of answered my question with one of your last slides, but over your time there, what would be like your top two, maybe top three successes, like the companies that you're just, you'll never forget, even as you move on to your next endeavor, you'll always be like, oh yeah, I helped them. I got them there. I, you know, whatever. Yeah, that, that's a really great question. Um, I would say Pear Deck stands out. That's a pretty big home run. Um, for us to have worked on here at EDC and the founders were really, we worked with them on their original business a little bit too. So this is our second time around with them. So that one will definitely um, live on in my mind. Um, I would also say uh, Repour Wine Saver was a fun one to work on. I don't know if anyone's, you can see it. I'm gonna turn around here really quick while I grab it. This was a product, so this is a fun story, and this is sort of how EDC um, can get involved. So it was a Friday afternoon. I can't even remember what year it was. Let's say it was 2017. Um, I was sitting here kind of wrapping up my day, and occasionally we'll get people walk into the EDC. They'll see the sign and wonder what it's about. They might have a business idea or a family member who has a business idea or something like that. And so this gentleman walked in and said, hey, do you have a few minutes? I want to just kind of learn about your organization. And I said, sure. He came in and we had a conversation. I shared with him about what EDC does, who we help, those kinds of things. And he said that he had moved to Iowa um, with his wife, who is a doctor, and he had had a business in Wisconsin where they were from in the pet industry, pet care industry. And um, but he's had this idea and he said, you know, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if it's really legitimate or what have you. Could you help me? And so he kind of shared with me what it was, kind of, you know, generally what target market we would be going after or whatever. And I said, why don't you come back next Monday and meet with my colleague, Julie and I, and let's kind of just see what you've got and bring your prototype and you know, let's see what we can do. So basically it's a, just what it says, it's a wine saver. It's a basically a stopper that you would put in an opened bottle of wine. It has an oxygen absorbing sachet in it that takes out the oxygen, basically, you know, leaving the wine leaving the integrity in the wine, keeping it tasting fresh and tasting good as long as that stopper's in the bottle. And so he came in, he had a prototype. It was kind of a two-part piece. And so we helped him with market research and customer discovery. We helped him, um, connected him with Veritech Industries and Cedar Rapids to get some different prototypes made so we could have people start to test it. We helped with coming up with the name and we helped with packaging, finding a packaging supplier and a branding agency to help him put a look to this. We've helped with digital marketing, trade shows, marketing collateral, Kickstarter campaign. He actually launched his Kickstarter campaign from an event we used to host called Innovation Expo. So we launched the Kickstarter campaign from the event floor, which was so much fun um, to do that. And, uh, and so here he is, you know, a few years later, selling product to wineries, uh, selling them in retail stores, getting accolades from, you know, key industry trade publications, sommeliers, you know, supporting and endorsing the uh, product. And um, it's just that that's been a fun one to work yeah. on. Yeah. Jeez, to be in from the ground up. That's very cool. Yep. We got, we got to do all the fun stuff. On yeah, that. right. So, sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess they will all stick with me. Uh, mobile demand is one. That's one of the clients that I mentioned has been with Kurt since literally he opened the doors. Matt Miller is the founder and that company is located in Hiawatha. Um, it started out and is, I guess, primarily a rugged tablet maker. So like if you think of um, a UPS driver having that tablet where he can find his inventory or have you sign. If you think about um, Disney World having something like that for their kiosks or something or retailers for their back rooms, um, those could be mobile demand tablets. Just this year, they launched a software technology called 4D Mobile uh, that helps them basically assess the 3D sizing of products on a pallet to help with warehousing and logistics. So that one is exciting for me because he came in and met with Kurt as an idea on a napkin. And now, you know, almost 19 years later, he's a viable employer that is still continuing to launch new technology and products right here in the quarter. I mean, all good ideas start on a napkin, don't they? I know, all the good ones do. Right? <laughs> all the good ones do, exactly. Uh, so those does anybody else have any questions? 
Christy, I just have, so like, you know, you, you talk about clients and customers and all that, and just kind of thinking of, of your guys' model being a little different, right? Like you guys are an investor-based organization, mm -hmm. correct? So I'm, how do you guys balance kind of all that as far as, you know, returning on investment, you know, the city of Iowa City versus the city of North Liberty versus Onward Bank and Trust versus, you know, like, I understand it's all in the ecosystem. And I, I feel mm -hmm. like Medco are similar to that, right? Like we're all we're working towards that goal. How, right. how, do you, how do you guys balance that as far as, you know, continuing to show that, you know, we're getting our money's worth as an investor, but then mm -hmm. you guys are then also balancing that you're providing services to these clients. And I'm assuming it's, it's not, you know, a pro bono type of thing. So I, I'm just curious, can you maybe speak so we could understand that a little more. And you bet. That is a great question. So EDC is publicly and privately sponsored to Brady's point. We receive funds from the state of Iowa, the cities of Cedar Rapids, Marion, Medco, uh, North Liberty, Coralville, Iowa City, Hiawatha, and probably more that I'm, that I'm forgetting. Um, and then we're privately sponsored by law firms, accounting firms, uh, Alliant Energy is a supporter. Um, and then in some cases, our clients have grown enough to become supporters back to EDC to support that next generation of entrepreneurs. That, that's what I like to see, because that means they're doing well enough, they can support the organization that helped them launch. So that, that's sort of that piece of it. How do we um, stay in good graces, I guess, if you will, with our supporters? How do we prove that ROI and how do we kind of manage that? It is challenging sometimes, you know, to make sure that we're spending our time where we need to be spending it, because we, we want to help. Somebody walks in that door and we don't necessarily care where they live as long as they're in Iowa, right? We just want to support, but we are mindful and we do track, you know, where are these entrepreneurs coming from? Where are they located? And even sometimes, sometimes they relocate, like they might've come to us. We've had a couple of clients, maybe they were originally in North Liberty. Now they're in Cedar Rapids, you know, so we kind of have to manage that politically a little bit. Um, we really try to keep in mind what's best for the entrepreneur, what's best for the business, what makes the most sense. But we feel strongly that the work that we do helps these companies scale and scale at a faster rate, which then in turn helps the communities that are supporting us. And we do provide, you know, annual reports. Kurt usually has, you know, an annual meeting with each city that we, you know, are supported by. Um, and the state, I think it's a quarterly report, just, you know, who are we seeing, you know, what kind of things are we seeing? So um, I feel like there's another piece to your question that I wanted to cover and I'm not thinking, you know, clients. So what do clients pay? Um, so EDC to meet with a client initially is completely free of charge. We'll bring them in, have even that scorecard review to get an understanding of the business um, and the priorities and, and if we can help and if they're interested in receiving our help. Sometimes we might have an initial meeting and that's all that it is. We might ask a few questions, maybe make a few connections and they're good with that. And that's fine, you know, that it's up to them. Obviously it's their business and it's their time. If they decide to engage with EDC, we have a sliding fee scale of a service agreement fee. Um, we have a services agreement that can be canceled at any time. And it just kind of outlines expectations. You know, what will we do? What do we expect of them? We expect them to report stats that we report in aggregate to our investors and our stakeholders. That's sort of their, you know, our expectation of them. And the fee is just, um, it can be as little as $0 a month if they're a student started business or, you know, if they're affiliated with any of our area colleges or universities, we work with them for free. Um, if they're a startup business that has just a regular product or software, it's $50 a month, all the way up to if they're, you know, generating revenue over a million dollars, it might be $150 a month to work with EDC. To your point, if we engage really closely on a project of sorts, or we do work product where we're actually performing marketing duties or um, sometimes in some cases, Kurt has even been the VP of sales for a few of our clients until they can find somebody in their organization. So he'll train the sales team. He'll meet with them multiple times a week, you know, those kinds of things. We provide statements of work for those and uh, uh, quote them for our clients and they can determine, yep, you know, I want to move forward with that. I you know, think that's reasonable or maybe I'll just find another vendor and do that. And that's fine too. So. Oh, thanks for that. I that clarifies it. I, I think, yeah, there's, there's all these, you know, different things, right. As far as trying to balance those things. So it's, it's just interesting for, for me starting back here in November, right. You, you don't really realize what you're signing up for sometimes. Right. So it's uh yeah, I guess as, as far as um, 
Um, you know, from our perspective here in Marion, what, what's your um, advice for, for us to continue to connect with you guys and, and make sure that we're, uh, we're taking advantage of, of the great things you guys are doing at the EDC? I mean, I, I just love your, your perspective of it as, yeah. and I know I'm not trying to throw this out there, but congrats on your, your, new, your new venture here in the next couple of weeks. So um, I, I just love to get your perspective before, before you uh, ride off into the, to your new adventure. Yeah, so thank you for that. Um, and that actually was the point that I wanted to make. Thank you for bringing me back to that. So, you know, you had asked, you know, how do you manage making sure that you are working in the communities that are supporting EDC? And so part of that is us being mindful, you know, and, and understanding. And if we hear of a company reaching out and introducing ourselves, but part of that also is our stakeholders thinking of EDC and thinking of us not as just a mere donation or you know, but as an investment and a resource for the businesses that you are interfacing with in your communities or that you are hearing about or they're coming across. So we, um, I would say we can't get that enough. You know, we won't really want that reciprocation coming from your organization, you know, as you are working with a business, um, even if it's just, it's an introduction and we meet with them and we don't work with them right away. They at least know that we're here, understand a little bit about what we do, what we can do, how we work, so that maybe right now is not the right time, but maybe, you know, six months, a year down the road, they're looking at launching a new product, or maybe their marketing, you know, tactics aren't working the way they thought they were, or maybe they're challenged, you know, bringing on personnel and they need some help with refining the onboarding process or the hiring process or something like that, or putting some processes in place. We're here to help them do that as a resource. So, you know, I would just say, you know, just make sure that you, you know, if you can just, and don't always worry about, I know that sometimes people get, you know, do they have to have a business plan that comes to you? Or maybe they're not quite a right fit, but I don't really know because I don't really quite understand your model. I don't know if they're really interstate commerce yet or not. Introduce them. We can always chat with them, get an understanding and refer them on to Julie, at, you know, that the SBDC or, you know, maybe even Stan, if they're more of a consulting candidate, you know, maybe they're not really a fit for EDC. They don't really want to work with us specifically, but maybe they still need some guidance and help so we can connect them with the other resources in the, the area that makes sense for them. And we're happy to do that. Okay. Does that help? Does that answer your question? No, I, I think that, that um, at the end of the day, right, it's, it's if, if we know we can't do it or provide that value, then we want to make that connection to, to provide that value. So I, I think that last point you made was great. And I, I think that's what I've enjoyed about meeting with you guys and, and other groups like us is that everyone seems to have that same, you know, mindset that let's, let's all win together. So right. I, right. I, we all win if this area remains uh, vibrant and in, even becomes more vibrant than it is today. You know, that's for the next generation and generations to come. So. Yeah. And if we still have that positive, positive attitude after this last year of, of a, the Rachel uh, pandemic combination, I, I think we're going to do okay, right? So we're a resilient, resilient community. Um, absolutely. And we've had clients who've actually flourished during this time. It's been kind of heartwarming to see. I mean, it has not been without struggle or challenge. And certainly there are businesses that are challenging and industries that really okay. suffered. But we've had some clients who really have had the right products um, at the right time to help with this situation. So yep. Yep. I'm good. I think you having been there, Christy, for 17 years, I think about, I, I have just, my other job um, is I own a, a pottery store, a painting well pottery store that I've had now for 21 years. And I think about, there wasn't really anything 21 years ago. I know this isn't on your scale, mm -hmm. but just even finding that, like, it seemed like that kind of came about not mm -hmm. long after I opened, but I think about just, I mean, really, when you think about how long ago Kurt opened, what were people doing before that? I mean, I still think of it as new. <laughs> All yeah. the help that's out there, like it's crazy the help that is out there. I just had a, a lady from Mississippi reach out to me this past week. How did you get started? And I'm thinking, oh, girl, <laughs> what are you calling me an Iowa for? I mean, there's got to be a million things in Mississippi, you know, that you can do. It's crazy. What? I do think our ecosystem is really uh, vibrant. I mean, when Kurt started this, there really wasn't anything quite like it, but we have 
you know, we have the SBDC, we have strong SBDC, we have strong score, we have Iowa Startup Accelerator, and we have things like you're doing at Medco with the Startup Exchange. We have, you know, ICAD in Iowa City doing some things. Um, you know, when we started and we, we held networking events monthly because there wasn't anything like it. And so we did that probably for my first oh my goodness, six or seven years at EDC, maybe even more than that. And then after a while, their other entities came on board and they were doing such a great job at that. We thought, you know, we're just going to wind that back, give that to them because they're doing a smashing job at it. And we're just going to focus on our work with the clients. And so we've, you know, morphed what we've done based on the other resources that have become available in the area. And there are, are a lot. It's just the plugging into the ecosystem can be challenging, navigating it and understanding what what is out there what makes most sense at what time can be difficult right, right. i mean maybe i was sort of pre-internet not really but <laughs> you yeah, know but I things mean, were different they were different they're so different it's yeah. crazy crazy yeah. and like you know the julies of the world i if she existed 21 years ago i didn't you don't know <laughs> yeah yeah but, well, being an entrepreneur i you know we see this too with our clients when you're first starting out, especially, and it's just you, or maybe you and a co-founder, um, it's lonely for them. And, you know, they've put a lot on the line. They may not be able to talk to their spouse about how things are really going, you know, and because yeah. they've put their house on the line and, you know, so I have to keep that close to the vest and I'm really sweating bullets over here. And so sometimes part of it is just therapy and, you know, and helping them. And sometimes it's, you have, the entrepreneur has to decide what makes best sense for them personally. You know, it's their life. You know, Kurt would say business is a game and you should be having fun. You know, it's a game to be played. And so you have to be, you have to have that balance and make sure that your, your, your life is well, that you are well. So, well, I think even of the guy that came in, the report guy, you know, mm -hmm. here he has this idea. Do I want to share it? What if I tell somebody and they steal it? You know, I mean, there has mm -hmm. to be that. that yeah, there is that too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For sure, like this idea is so good, I can't go share with anybody. But it really is it out help. there. I just don't understand. <laughs> yeah, right. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. Well, before we let let you go, one last. Anybody have any other questions? I just had a, one quick question. It was, are is the expo going to come back? I mean, obviously, you know, it didn't exist during uh, the pandemic and so on. But that was always fun, and I actually do remember the report guy uh only because i'm a wino and so of course we have tours <laughs> at our house and uh awesome. talk about uh, people about it i also use it in one of my uh training sessions that i do is talking about how you know someone came up with an idea and i my only other comment on stealing the idea is that you know a lot of people have ideas but it's the follow-through that makes a difference and making it happen so don't be afraid to share an idea with a uh, an advisor or a mentor or whomever um, to help you figure out what is your path then to make it happen. So, right. so what's the scoop on the, you know, events and that sort of thing? Well, I, so as Brady alluded to, I am leaving EDC at the end right. of next week, which is painful. <laughs> right. Exciting, but painful. And so I really don't know the answer to that. Um, I'm not mm -hmm. sure that it will be coming back. We had taken a step back even before COVID anyway, just to kind yeah. of reevaluate its fit in the ecosystem. Um, it's, we are such a lean team. It was a lot of work and it was, it was on my plate primarily. Um, and we kept wanting to grow it and to grow it with one person managing it was really challenging, but it, I feel personally, but I, I'm probably biased, that it was a really quality event and was a fun event to put on. And I think it, it, there is some need for it. Uh, we had, you know, when we started it, we have had pitching components of the expo. So entrepreneurs at all stages could pitch their businesses, sometimes to a panel of business experts, and then in the afternoon to a panel of actual VCs, kind of a la Shark Tank, if you will. And then we had the entrepreneur showcase piece in the evening, which was basically a mini trade show of Iowa businesses of all stages. That was fun. Um, and I think there's there's a need, but I think it's just fun for people to actually see and mingle with these founders and these people who have the crazy ideas and the energy and the passion and the wherewithal to make them into a business. Um, so hopefully, I don't know, maybe you'll see it come back. Maybe somebody else will take it and run with it. I, I guess I just don't know, but it was fun to do. Um, a lot of hard work, but uh, rewarding. Cool. Thank you. Well, for those of you that have 
joined us for the first time today, or those of you who have joined us multiple times, really. Um, our big announcement this morning, we are meeting back in person starting in August. We are headed back to the Marriott here in Marion, who so graciously hosts us, and they provide um, coffee, water, sometimes muffins if we're lucky. Um, anyway, we are going to start meeting in person again. We're, we Zoom, we're saying goodbye to. So um, August, oh gosh, hold on. The third Thursday, August 19th, um, we will be at the Marriott. Our guest is yet to be announced. Um, so please put us on your calendar. If you haven't, just um, our Facebook page will have the event on it. We also are on the Meetup website um, on your side of exchange. So find us there. Christy, good luck, congratulations. Thank you. Joining us today, Stan, nice to see a new face today. Good luck with you, but please join us again. Julie, have a great day, it's always good to see you.